Okay, sorry about the above logo. I I just realized now. Okay, so I will talk about uh, beyond LDAVs methods. So for that, first uh, we'll try to motivate ourselves and uh, revisit some of our previous talks. And uh, based on the lesson we learned so far from those talks, we'll move forward. So. What is our interest? We are inter obviously we are interested in materials, but they are not ordinary materials. For example, high temperature cuprate superconductors, adjacent metal oxides, heavy fermion systems. These are all strongly correlated systems. And these materials have huge applications, for example, in energy, in switching devices, and as a memory register based devices, field effect transistors, magnetic storage, and so on. So if we can understand these materials, we can gain a lot, but at the same time, we can have a lot of pain because all these materials are almost D and F orbital systems. And as you can see here, when we move from A orbital towards D and A orbital systems, the bandwidth becomes narrower and narrower. So when the bandwidth becomes narrower, electrons will fill each other more and more. And this gives rise to strong correlation effects. So in such materials, we cannot neglect such strong correlation effects. And at the same time, we can have also disorder. So life becomes really difficult because in such situations, conventional Fermi liquid theory doesn't work and problem becomes almost non-perturbative. So how to tackle this kind of problem? So to begin with, or just, uh, we can start with the simplest picture, I remember coming stock that we can have a simple lattice and electron from one lattice can hop to another lattice. And when two electron will meet on a single lattice, they will feel an interactions. And this is a basic picture uh, has been described uh, or absorbed in Hubbard model. So this is one of the simplest model. So though Hubbard model is uh, really looks uh, really so simple, but almost impossible to solve magnetically except in one dimensions. So it's really painful. So as an alternate, if we want to take computational route, it is also really expensive because you just think of, uh, if we consider just a two side systems, you have to deal with two to the four configurations. So when the system size becomes larger and larger, it's really difficult to solve. So for that, various approximation methods has been developed. For example, dynamic and mean field theory. So it has been realized that Hubbard model has one-to-one -one mapping on the classical Ising systems. And for such classical Ising systems, we already had a mean field theory. So based on the same motivations, we can also develop a, another mean field theory. But this mean field theory is not an ordinary static mean field theory. It's a dynamical in the sense, it captures all those temporal dynamical fluctuations. So the basic idea is uh, we are going to a lattice model and in the, in the thermodynamic limit, for a given site, the direction of an individual neighboring spin is not important, only average matters. So what we are doing, we are mapping a lattice problem to a single site impurity problem. And DMT gives us that machinery with which we can solve this impurity problem. And last, couple of years, no doubt DMFT has been a really successful tool uh, for describing 
strongly coded systems in various aspects, for example, metal and silver transitions. So here, uh, just uh, so uh, I mean, it, uh, it it describes uh, we are we understood a lot of metal and silver transition uh, using RDNS. But uh, model-based calculation is always based on a simple model, and sometimes structure property of material can be really important. We cannot simply dump every material to a Hubbard model. Even multi-Hubbard Hubbard model cannot be good enough. For example, if we take the high temperature cuprates, there is no doubt that this copper layer or the layered structure, whether it's a cuprate or nictite superconductors, iron nictite that layered has something to do with, the, uh, with its uh, physics, cuprate physics. For example, in transition metal oxide, you can see the M1 phase, this vanadium atom form a dimer. And this dimer plays a role, uh, a significant role in the physics of VO2. So we cannot simply uh, neglect the material information and material information is really important. In such cases, DFT at its best to take this material information. So what we are doing in a, in a CONSAM scheme, we have discussed many times this, that uh, we are solving this uh, CONSAM equations. And this CONSAM potential has three component. One is external, now there is heart rate, another first, last one is exchange correlations. So remember uh, Marcus last talk, so when he talked about, we have many, 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 many approximations in, in such terms. So, and the last couple of years, uh, DFT community is working really hard to make more and more uh, good uh, exchange correlation functional. So we started with LDA, GGA has been developed and various meta GGA uh, has been developed recently, scan, hybrid, uh, all this advanced functional has been developed and found to be successful in, 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 in describing even uh, correlated systems such as transition metal oxides. For example, uh, this is one kind of uh, very cheap uh, 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 MBJ. It's very popular in Win2K community. And it has been tested for a series of transition metal oxides. And it gives uh, very good band gap values uh, compared to other expensive GW uh, based method and um, within the same consum scheme. So it's uh, sometimes MBJ is really good to predict a good band gap value. Another new functional scan, scan scans uh, stands for self-consistent, appropriately non-conserved functional. It's a kind of uh, uh, recently developed meta GGA functional and it has been applied to cuprates and is found to predict this uh, insulating ground state. So it worked uh, well. Hybrid, no doubt hybrid is a uh, very good functional. So for uh, in the left-hand side, hybrid first applied uh, to, uh, uh, I mean, it was uh, applied in uh, describing VO2 which is considered to be a very strongly coded system, same one phase. And you can see in the upper, if we do just a simple GGA, it gives you a metallic solution, which is not correct. But if we do a hybrid functional, it gives you a, that insulating uh, solution for the M1 fan phase is correct. But there is a problem. 
if we consider later, uh, people have been tested. If we consider, uh, if we do spin polarized calculations, you can again end up with a metallic solution. So there had a problem. So further, people have studied uh, that it was a problem with the pseudo potential. We had a lot of discussion of uh, what is all electron calculation, what is pseudo potential. So later, uh, people uh, tried uh, did some calculation with a good hard pseudo potential and successfully described all the phases of this. Field. So anyway, the so basic idea is a hybrid function also can be a good choice, but uh, very expensive. And uh, another is the uh, LDA plus U method. So what we are doing in LDA plus U method, we are we are con uh, we are constructing this orbital dependent potential. And we are projecting out in correlated space. And we are putting this on site U in that particular correlated space. So this is the LDA plus U. And LDA plus U has been applied to transition metal oxides. It worked well. For here, I am showing the density of states for manganese oxide and iron oxide. You can see if we do simple LDA, you cannot get the gap state, but for the LDA plus U, you can get a uh, insulating uh, feature. So it worked well. But LDA plus U also had some problem. Like if we apply VO2, so VO2 has a two phases. Uh, one is rutile phases, one is M1 phases, another is uh, delta out M2 phases. So if you apply LDA plus U on the M1 phases, you get insulating nature, that's good, with some U values. But if you keep that same U value and do for rutile phases, you will end up insulating solution, which is not correct. So sometimes LDA plus U method doesn't work well. So it, it's just uh, towards more and more bias towards insulator. So atomic limit cannot be recovered in LD plus U. So because LD plus U correction is just a Hartree-Fock approximation for the atomic self-energy, not the actual self-energy of electrons. So as a natural extension of this LDA plus U method, LDA plus DFT has come up. So what we were doing in LDA plus U we are doing correction of this potential, which is just the Hartree-Fock value of the extended atomic self-energy. So next, uh, people have tried that atomic exact self-energy instead of Hartree-Fock value, uh, take the exact atomic value, which is Hubbard one approximations. So you can go further and take, let's, uh, use self energy from atom allowing to hybridize with conducts at bath or under some impurity problem. So the sigma is can be replaced by sigma impurity. And when, when we are uh, taking sigma impurity and put the self-consistent machinery of DMFT, we are moving towards, that's, that's our LDA plus DMFT. So, LDA plus DMFT is can be a think of as a natural extension of LDA plus U methods. Okay, so we developed a uh, one LDA DMFT scheme uh, uh, in in my work uh, past. So I, I will just uh, go through that work a little bit. Uh, so in our scheme as a test material. Uh, it's kind of routine task. We considered strontium vanadate. It's a simple material. It's good to test. So we considered uh, strontium vanadate. Can you just uh, remind us what is the crystal structure that you considered here? Uh, strontium vanadate. I think it's a simple cubic. It's a very simple structure. Okay. 
Yeah, so, so uh, it's a very simple uh, structure. One vanadium. I, I will show you just uh, one, one. So it's a rock salt. It's a rock salt, sorry. A rock salt, yeah. Rock salt. Yes. So first, uh, to begin with, so uh, in this uh, LDD NFT scheme, I, I will uh, come more on the LDD NFT part. So first, we performed DFT calculations, plain DFT calculation with all electron method in Win2K and compute its electronic structure and try to understand its electronic structure. That is the first step. So left-hand side, it's a density of states and right-hand side, it's a band structure. So you can see in the density of states near the Fermi region, uh, T2G orbital dominates, uh, e.g. Uh, doesn't have uh, significant contributions. So this can be, uh, this is reflected in the band structure. So you can see that uh, around the Fermi level zero, there is three T2G bands. And away from the Fermi level, those are isolated bands. So those are not important. So we will, we'll, so like LDA plus U method, we'll try Sorry, to- how can, uh, can you just explain, I'm not familiar, I may be naive question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in when you just do DFT, there is no mm -hmm. local orbitals that you have to consider, right? You are, you just you just run the DFT code, and uh, how do we associate those bands uh, with a particular orbital symmetry? Sorry for being naive. Yeah, it's 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 a, a good question, uh, no problem. So uh, from uh, from uh, from the electronic structure, we can project out the contribution for uh, individual, uh, e.g., uh, T2G oxygen p uh, s orbital so we, we can we can we can do that it's already implemented what you mean by a projection on the angular momentum yes circle harmonics i see yes. so it has a, a spherical symmetry corresponding to that but it's not a really an atomic issue right yes yes so so we can we can see that uh, this uh, at, at the at the formula level we, we have contribution mm -hmm. from just a three t2g bands so since uh, these these are the states which is going to control the physics of the system, so we will we'll focus on that. Mm -hmm. So these are the three T two G bands we will take care in our DMT calculations. Okay. So how to uh, pass this DFT information towards the DFT code? So from the DFT, we have this block states which is noted by psi. And we are going to construct localized basis, or here we are considering Weiner functions out of these block states. And so there is a various scheme, I will come to that. So this Weiner function, we are trying to uh, spreading of this Weiner function uh, mini as minimized as possible. So that's why this scheme is called maximally localized Weiner functions. So is that is that a Vanderbilt's method? Vanderbilt's method? Yes, yes. Uh, so it's first developed by Vanderbilt and then uh, has been taken. Uh, yeah, towards uh, mm -hmm. it's a first developed by Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, and this is a band structure in the interpolated band structure in the Weiner function. You can see we have successfully take out these three bands. Uh, so, and we will <clears throat> pass this information to, to, to the DMFT codes. And this is a, a, a Weiner function for this one orbital. You can see the D orbital shape here. Okay, so we, we have uh, from the DFT, we have now this T2G material information on strontium panadate, and we are going to pass this information. <clears throat> so, so those three T2G band information, with that, we have constructed this material specific Hamiltonian HDFT. And we are putting this HDFT in the bare Green's function of the DMFT loop. So wh what we are doing, we are, so now is the standard DMFT machinery we can, we can work on. 
So we have, we did uh, DFT calculations and out of this DFT calculation, we have constructed this material specific Hamiltonian HDFT. And we are putting this HDFT to the bayer greens function. From their bayer greens function, as a routine task, we construct lattice greens function. And let that lattice greens function, we are putting to the Dyson equation. And we are solving this impurity problem there. We get the new self energy. And if the self energy uh, is not uh, conserved, we can give it back. The self conservation loop will continue. So this is a very simple LDA DFT scheme uh, for strongly correlated systems. So after uh, this is a, these are the results mm, from uh, our uh, DFT calculations. <laughs> So left-hand side, we have a spectral function and right-hand side, we have a photo emission spectra, which can be directly compared with experiments. As you can see, uh, as a benchmark, we compared various other methods like uh, GW plus DFT. Uh, so as a solver, I will come to that. So we, for our is MOIPT scheme. So we compared CTKMC and we compared Conventional LDA. So as you can see, if you do simple LDA, we don't have any Hubbard bands in the spectral function, which is a signature standard signature of strongly correlated systems. And also notice that for various method, the position of the Hubbard band is different. So which comes from the impurity solver. And the right hand side, if we compare with the real photo emission experiment with our results, our agreement is quite good enough. Uh, LDA DFT uh, uh, with this solver works well. What's so interesting is that this uh, bump at 1.5, minus 1.5 electron volts, which is presumably the interband transition or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually very sharp in the, photo, in the experiment and it's sitting at an energy which seems to be kind of lower than the LDA plus the MFT. Yeah. It's a lot, it's consistent. Uh, so can you actually connect the position of this peak to the value of U that you need to use? Uh, no, uh, it, uh, I mean, we, with the, uh, okay. So yeah, I, I will, I will come to that. So this U and J value, uh, yeah. So like uh, people, is adapting U and J value as a fitting parameter. So this uh -huh. U and J value has been calculated for this material by RPA. I mean, we have not calculated, we have taken those values. So uh -huh. if you are really uh, focusing on this material, you should use these values. Obviously, if you increase a play with U and J value, your Hubbard band position will be, uh, yeah. Right. But, but this, my understanding is that these estimates based on constraint RPA are not always very accurate. I mean, this is, you know, sort of yes. order so of magnitude. Is, this. <laughs> yes, there is another issue. You can calculate uh, U from uh, RPA or you can calculate U take, considering uh, dynamical effects. Uh, yeah. So my, que my question is, you know, the, 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 the fact that the, the Hubbard band is not uh, really comparing very with experiments. Do you actually have some clue? Why is that? I mean, what what is the main reason for this? Is it the value of U? Is it something else? The, uh, you know, what's your feeling about that? Mm, my feeling is that, uh, I, I mean, uh, here the role of impurity solver is very important. Uh, you can see for the various impurity solver, the position of the Hubbard band is different. So how we are treating interactions, uh, that is important. Uh, uh, if your impurity solver is not good enough, uh, I actually would think that the impurity for the Hubbard bands, they shouldn't make so much difference. It's mostly the quasi particle part that impurity solvers. Uh, uh, I mean, because usually the position Hubbard band is just given by you, right? Yeah. It's not, yeah. I see. So, yeah. So, huh. uh, uh, how you are treating that you? Uh, that okay. is, yeah. So, there's a, a one scheme, a simple scheme for mm -hmm. ADDMT. So this is a one sort calculation. So next I will talk about uh, how you can improve uh, your LDA DFT procedure uh, in every uh, step. So to uh, uh, remind you, 
our uh, this is our LDA DFT scheme. And if you can notice that uh, as an impurity solver here, I am showing QMC, quantum particle. So to give you a reminder, we are starting with some effective Hamiltonian. We are putting the Hamiltonian in the lattice uh, Green's function. We are putting this lattice Green's function to the impurity problem and we are solving uh, self-consistent. But when you uh, do LDDFT, you, you will face, uh, th there are some issues, uh, various issues. For example, there is another. So step one, we are constructing Hamiltonian. And this construction can be really difficult for some systems. Uh, like we have uh, for, for our past, I showed uh, strontium vanadate. Everybody, uh, we try strontium vanadate because it's a simple system. In the sense, so if we see the band structure, this T2G bands is completely isolated with another bands. It's nicely lies at the Fermi level. But some systems, it uh, cannot be. Uh, for example, uh, here is a interpolated uh, band structure, which is mixed with, uh, so uh, these are five D bands, but these five D bands are mixed with other S bands. So when we will try to project out these five D bands, it's become really difficult. You cannot just uh, cut it down this S bands from there. And if we take the whole window, that S and D bands both, your system size becomes really larger and most dangerously, it gives you this off-diagonal component in the Hamiltonian. So we, uh, we don't want off-diagonal component <laughs> because if we take off-diagonal component, you, you will get some pain in your DUFT calculations. So for such structure, uh, sometimes this uh, constructing this Hamiltonian is really difficult. So I talked about one scheme for constructing this uh, Hamiltonian uh, using maximally localized Weiner function that uh, as Vlad mentioned is mainly developed by Vanderbilt. Recently, uh, various other scheme has been developed like uh, general projector scheme. So general projector scheme is good for uh, if we consider large supercell, which is much needed uh, because if you're considering, if you if you, there are more number of basis atoms in your unit cell and such mixed up kind of situations, you need to go, uh, you need to include more and more orbitals and such cases projector scheme is, uh, is a good one. And it has been implemented in uh, tricks uh, toolbox and uh, also implemented in FASP. Another uh, scheme is uh, downfolding. NMTO and uh, other people uh, do that. But problem is NMTO is not a free code. So we cannot have access. Mostly, most people uh, do not have, uh, it's not open access. So only a few people can get access of that code. So these are the scheme. So you can improve uh, for constructing this Hamilton, which is really important uh, first step. Next. Now there are some structure like uh, here I am showing one. So these are distorted structure. So like I showed you strong sample band is a simple one. So here one iridium atom is, uh, is ox uh, that oxide is not a perfect octahedra. Since it's not a perfect octahedra when you uh, do uh, electronic structure calculations, the left-hand side, you, you will end up with uh, this kind of density of states where you can see your dxy, your dxz, and dyz stays together at the Fermi level, almost mixed up at the, at the same, uh, and almost uh, at the same positions. And uh, if we construct your Hamiltonian, from these kind of density of states, you, you will have a, we, we don't want that. So it, it will again give you this off diagonal uh, thing, which is not, uh, you will face a lot of problem in your DMFT. So in general, DMFT is rotationally invariant, but there is some real issues with here. So we don't want that. So for that, what 
one other technique. So we have to rotate the system. I mean, we have to uh, play with a little bit rotation matrix of this uh, center atom so that this uh, three orbitals is no more mixed up. It is separated from each other as you can see the density of state in the rotated after rotations where uh, this blue one is little shifted from the formulable, green one is uh, left shifted from the left hand side and same as so with the red one at the, at the almost at the formulable. And we are, it's good to do um, DFT calculation for that. So these are, so sometimes uh, if we have this kind of rotated uh, distorted structure DFT calculation is really difficult. And this is another famous example of VO2, uh, V2O3. So if you, if you want to do V2O3 calculations, uh, then, then also you, you, will, you can face a lot of problems. So these are uh, steps uh, you should take care uh, when you're constructing Hamilton. Now that is double counting. So uh, yeah, so Vlad uh, has already asked this question, so double counting. So what is double counting? Now in the, when you are doing DFT calculations, we are already uh, putting some kind of interaction in our extent correlation function. And again, we are putting interaction in our DMFT. So there is a double counting. We have to subtract that uh, contributions. So, a double counting issue is not very new in the LDA DMFT method because double counting issue is already there in LDA plus U methods and scheme already had been developed for LDA plus U methods. So one, two popular scheme, one is around mean field and another is fully localized limit. Uh, so this was two popular scheme in our, uh, in LDA plus U methods and people have adopted for LDA plus DMFT methods. So uh, yeah, so Vlad asked me one uh, that uh, how, how, how is this double counting really matters in, in the, where it's, it's a gap or on the Hubbard bands, how, how that is different. So here is a calculation people has done for nickel oxide for various double counting values. You can see that for you, depending on the double counting, uh, you can see the width of the gap around the formulable. Uh, uh, different, differ, and even the position of the Hubbard bands also differ. So double counting issue is, uh, double counting is, is sensitive or can be sensitive for the spectral functions. So in our uh, scheme, LDNAFT, we have not uh, used uh, this kind of double counting. Uh, our is a simple case and we absorb in the chemical potential. So in our MOIPT solver, we, 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 we uh, considered uh, controlled chemical potential through this way. So you have to take care double counting in your LDD of technical questions. Now there is uh, Hohn's coupling. So yeah, from the common stock, we, we, are, uh, we understood the second quantized notation. So I, I'm not going to worry about that. So you can, you can see that when, when is, uh, when you uh, uh, consider the multi-orbital Hubbard, uh, Hubbard model, we have considered this is a simple density density type interactions. But you, uh, if you want to improve your calculation, you should take care of your J uh, in the fully rotational invariant uh, from other manner. And uh, as you can see, I mean, recently there are a lot of work, LDNFT work uh, for Hohn's metal. So if you want to study such system, Hohn's uh, metal, that's, that kind of systems, you should take care J uh, quite accurately. So here is a place for implement your calculations. Another thing is impurity solver. So yeah, we had a lot of discussion. Uh, our uh, DMFT impurity problem, KKR DMFT uh, impurity problem. So our impurity problem is as I mean already uh, discussed one time that uh, so what we are doing in DFT, DFT maps, we are mapping the lattice model into an impurity model. So basically we are from Hubbard model, we are going single impurity Anderson model. And this is a single impurity Anderson model, which has three contributions, one is local, one is path, and one is hybridization. So this, uh, from this, 
impurity so like uh, nowadays one of the most popular impurity solver is the continuous time quantum monte carlo ctkmc so the basic principle of ctkmc is following that uh, you can divide this hamiltonian into two part and uh, h1 and h2 i consider h2 as a part of its in term and you can expand your partition function as follows and in the partition function each term can be a, a think of a diagrams so solve like this uh, so in since it's a continuous time you are free from discretization error and basically if if you want to talk in terms of diagram we uh, you are not truncating anywhere in, in principle you are considering all all kinds of diagrams for other solver like patterson theory uh like uh, i mean if we from uh, feynman dyson patterson theory we can we can have this kind of all uh, diagrams for so approximation methods like iterated patterson theory we are truncating on the second order so it's a uh, this kind of solver is approximation based so we are truncating on the second order and we starts with answers uh, the sigma impurity which is the main uh, difficult part for the dft uh, is based on this answer and this is sigma 2 is your second order pair bubble diagram on the real frequency axis so these are the various impurity solver so obviously uh, we have advantage disadvantages of various impurity solver so like for the ctkmc it's almost exact but for larger system size sometimes five or if we if you are dealing with five orbital and sometimes you can have uh, more number of basis atoms in a uh, in non equivalent in the unit cell and if you are to go to the low temperature it becomes a little difficult another thing is uh, the city can see you will uh, you will work with the uh, imaginary frequency axis so to get the finally at the end of the day you want to get your data on the real, real frequency axis so you have to do this analytical continuations whereas other uh, solver like uh, approximation based ipt it's a fast uh, you don't have to do any analytical continuation you can get uh, real frequency data you can give uh, access for the low temperature but it's a uh, approximately truncated or not i i want to ask about the status of ipt right now because uh, uh i understand that various people including you and uh, others uh, and joel's group they have uh, developed this ipt beyond a single site uh, or single orbital and uh, i want to ask about the status because this is what i know is when you have particle hole symmetry then second order perturbation theory becomes exact also in the large u limit and that makes the ipt work well in stroke coupling but if you're not if you don't have particle hole symmetry and that includes many situations with more than one orbital then uh it's actually not exact at large u and then there was a way originally to fix it by adding some interpolation scheme by kayuta or kotler but uh, i want to ask when you say ipt do you, are you talking just about second order perturbation theory for the impurity solver or there is this additional scheme that enforces the atomic limit yeah so uh, i think coming uh, 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 let uh, let me write if i get wrong uh, yeah so uh, in our code i think there, there is no extra scheme uh, we are just a second order uh, truncation we are doing so it's a second order perturbation theory then mm -hmm. even if you don't which may not be exact in the atomic limit but you can think of it as just as an approximation that's what you call ipt right yeah. well i think you, you you can still have no constraint why it's not just pure second order perturbation no no i i understand it's a second order perturbation theory when you solve the impurity model and then there's self consistency on top of it right uh when you do the ipt you still need to solve for the constraint sometimes you try to satisfy looking at free um things like that so we also, are so, so so there is an approximation there is there is an interpol that what they, what they used to call it interpolation scheme you know the self energy is not not just the one diagram but there is actually some nonlinear function of that of that bubble one bubble diagram <coughs> and then that 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 interpolation scheme has a couple of parameters in it which you can fix them by what you're saying by 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 some constraints right 
Yeah, I think I think he does, right? If you look at the formula cool. on the last page, there are a bunch of parameter A of uh, B of. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's the Coyote Crossley originally interpolation yeah. scheme. The A and B are fixed by some constraints. But uh, my question is now this: um, when you you know there is there is not there is various ways to fix A and B or optimize it, which may work. Well, in the in one regime or another, but it's it's not like my it's just from what I remember, from what I know, there is not a, there is not a single scheme that is optimum or known yeah. to, right? Uh, so that's one issue that I want to. So uh, how the other issue that I heard that I actually have in my own work is that if you use the real access IPT, the Keldish version, which doesn't require a continuation, that usually has some serious problems in the insulating phase because the self energy has a pole often typically and then uh this pole is numerically difficult to handle so if you go to very low temperatures it will create this little bump uh in the within the mod gap and so you cannot so you nicely get see act activated behavior and things like this um uh, so um has have other people experienced this know about this issue you know when you apply real frequency ipt in the in the insulating phase Oh, I don't know about that. I also don't. I don't have much experience on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I tried to use it. For example, we had a you know original paper with uh, Carol Ogiar on on TMT plus uh, disorder the, the plus hub for the Hubbard model, and then you know her student uh, was trying to we we wanted to extend that scaling that the Anya has uh, Hannah has done to the disorder case, but but. Uh, when we try to go to the insulating phase with this code, okay. it, on the insulating side, it was it was crashing. It was it was having problems, and and so then we kind of um, abandoned trying to do this. But I, I wonder maybe maybe the, the, there is a better way to implement this code. Maybe I had a feeling that maybe this numerical problem could be fixed, and maybe someone has already done this. But I'm just asking, you know, if, if people know about issues like this. Yeah. So and and, uh, and I don't know about that issue, but uh, at the moment we are trying to uh, uh, treat this uh, uh, to go beyond this interaction interaction uh, term uh, type mm -hmm. of. It. I see. I see. So, I see. So we are working. So but have people actually tested this when you go beyond one orbital? You know, from multi orbital of a cluster. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. What well, seemed uh, it that way. Like it. Yeah. So, so this, what is uh, it? This is our results for that. So this is a three orbital uh, calculations IPT. Uh -huh, I see. So, so results I, are not are not um, unreasonable. I mean, they are not they are not going to be exactly the same as this, right? But yes. they are not unreasonable. Are, are you aware of some situations where it is becomes produces some crazy or very unphysical? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I face some problems. So this is a three orbital calculations. So and if you consider uh, spin, it's a six by six. But if we go beyond three orbital, so I I face some problems. So we try. I, I was trying with other materials like uh, some root nets, parasite. Well, miraculously, it's closer to the experimental result apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry. Miraculously, the result is closer to the photo emission experiment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Agreement. But um, my question was, did you find a situation where you found that IPT gives something completely unreasonable? That's my question. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, that's what I was uh, talking that if we go beyond three orbital, it gives you completely uh -huh. unreasonable. If you have an uh, off-diagonal element in your uh, Hamiltonian, it gives you unreasonable. <laughs> unreasonable results. Yeah, uh, causality breakdown, it's very hard to get. Uh, and, and can one do magnetically ordered states with IPT? Did you? Did anyone try that? I have not tried. I mean, uh, I I, I consider paramagnetic just the for, but I have right. tried with, uh, yeah, like anti magnetism or something. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we had a discussion. So various impurity solver you, you can choose. Uh, mm. So another uh, place to you can improve your calculation is another is a charge cell consistency. So, so I, what I showed is a, just a single sort LDA plus DFT calculations. 
But if you can consider the fully charged cell consistent, which has been also recently developed. So this is a uh, comparison for the strontium vanadate case for uh, single shot versus uh, charged uh, cell consistency. Uh, this, uh, so this effect is important. How, yeah, difficult, how that, difficult to get the char consistency? Uh, I have so not- Is the situation stable? I, yeah, I have not, uh, I don't have any experience with this kind oh. of yeah. Well, I, I know I know something about this. I mean, the howl is called howl. We try uh, spend a long time doing this, and basically the idea is that you do DFT, mm -hmm. and then you know then you use the, then you can compute the self energy for for given orbit localized orbital, right? Then you put this back in this uh, self energy in the Green's function, and that gives you a charge profile in you know the ground state charge distribution, which is now modified by this by the by the self energy. So then you you take the charge profile, which is input in your Cronsham equation, and recalculate the band structure, which is now modified, right? And then you have to recalculate the self energy from that again, and you have to iterate this until. So basically, what it's doing is it says that putting a U will displace some charge, and but when the charge is displaced sufficiently, then the band structure will change as well. So you cannot do one shot, right? Now in some systems that's not important. In other systems, it's more important. My personal feeling is that if you want to do extreme conditions, like if you go to hundreds of gigapascals, like you know, in geology and stuff like this, you go to extreme conditions over a broad range of parameters. There can be a large amount of charge transfer and other things changing in the band structure. And then doing one shot doesn't help you because you, your band structure itself will respond to correlations. But if you, if you consider a very narrow, narrow range of parameters, which is normal, typical for ambient conditions, then it probably doesn't matter so much, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. some, uh, for example, uh, nickel oxide, which is charge insulated, is really important for that. So yeah, my, my question is, so those systems are gapped. Right? Uh, so what? you have a gapped system, the self-energy have a lot of structure in there. Yeah. So how stable in general is the yeah, iterration? I yeah, I mean, I understand your question, but I, I have not. Um, How difficult to get the self consistency? That, that... No, I, I don't. I don't think this is. You know, uh, the the thing is that the main point of that is that once after you put the self energy in, uh, the the charge is displaced, right? But the fact that you have peaks in the gap that doesn't really affect the ground state discharge profile that much. So the point, the main point is that the charge profile in the ground state is changed, and that is what affects the Kohn-Sham equation. That's why the band structure is changing. So. I don't think it's that, that unstable. In fact, we've been using Howlett's code, hmm. which uh, admittedly doesn't do uh, downfolding. You know, they only yeah. they do a projector to construct localized d orbitals, but then they keep all the uncorrelated orbitals in momentum space mm -hmm. using the projector. And and then, but but they do you know uh, specifically in in force charge self consistency. And I believe that most other people are doing. I I'm not aware of the fact that. It is creating instability, but of course it takes a much longer time to converge because you have to iterate, iterate, you know. So there are maybe 10, 20 iterations in mm -hmm. this outer charge loop, right? Mm, yeah, some extra uh, outer charge loop is there. Yeah. Now I think this is in some, uh, what Howlett told me is that in some systems, especially in actinides, mm -hmm. uh, there is a large amount of charge transfer due to you, which you can understand, you know, in the multi insulator, you is really forcing discrete charge occupations of the d orbital and in a metal it's not right so if you go from a metal to an insulator there will be some charge transfer and in in some cases like in actinides uh, this uh, this will modify your band structure dramatically and and you can get for heavy fermions for example you can get no matter what if you don't apparently i've been involved in this uh, that's what i've been told that uh -huh. uh, if you if you don't consider this charge transfer carefully so you do one shot then uh you get wrong results simply because uh, you know there is a large amount of charge transfer and the band structure is very sensitive to it. Uh, okay. But these codes already exist. Very variety of codes exist. Yes, uh, so Hole has this code, this LD uh, DFT uh, embedded DFT code, fully charged. Yeah, embedded. Yeah. Uh, okay. My understanding is Folhard, Folhard's group Lulu has also another code based on KKR. Uh, which which also does the same thing, right? Uh, basically, they they all they all many of them also. I mean, so I my impression is that there are actually a variety of such codes. I think the Trix library also has a Alps library. I mean, the, the, the various people have implemented it, and yeah. I don't have a good feeling under which conditions you know 
this is so important. But while I was intrigued by Maria's result, because Maria's result that she showed that in a random solid, the, the charge occupation of various uh, atoms is actually modified from the periodic solid. And, and that means that this there is a charge transfer, right? And this charge transfer is precisely what this charge self-consistency is trying to actually optimize, right? So if you actually do one shot, you're, you're not, you know, you're not going to do a good job in instances where charge transfer is significant. Maria's result seems that indicate in a periodic limit, it's nothing. So we know what it is, but in a random solid, there can be random rearrangements of the charge. And, and that, you know, one may have to consider it through charge self consistency. So that's sort of, it seems to me an interesting direction of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so sorry, guys. Uh, it's a little uh, late. Uh, yeah, I, I'm almost done. Another two, three slides. Uh, so sorry. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So as uh, Vlad discussed, uh, that uh, charge cell consistency is really important. It gives you uh, so uh, good, quite accurate results. Yeah, I'm almost done. So like LDA DFT method. Uh, so naturally, you can you can go uh, KKR uh, CPA plus DFT. And uh, for KKR plus DFT is more easy compared to LDDFT because uh, KKR CPA is already Green's function method. So as we have already discussed, so remember Young's talk, we, we have, uh, so I'm not going because we already discussed. So these are important quantity in KKR that you can get from KKR, uh, this Green's function matrix. And uh, this, uh, from this, so, so you can, pass this green function directly to the DFT solver and get the sigma and uh, you can construct this self-consistent loop uh, easily. So this is Libu's work. Maybe Libu will talk more in detail with that, but I think uh, KKR uh, CPA plus DFT will be more easy to uh, work with. So with that, so I think uh, combined first principles and uh, uh, sorry, not anybody, it's a many body, sorry. Uh, many body approaches hold uh, many promises for strongly correlated and geometry. Thank you. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> Very nice talk. Uh, so any questions? Uh, let me uh, turn off uh, uh, a recording so we can just chat. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs>